Hello. Do you know, I haven't posted for quite a while, largely because I've been doing a lot of teaching, um, a lot of parenting, and losing my hair. Um, made a few banjos a while back and posted them and got some favourable comments, which was very nice, but I haven't really had much time recently. However, just had a week's holiday and um, went to the tip a few weeks back. And I came across an old guitar that was in a right old state, bashed, battered, the neck was falling off. Uh, somebody had obviously thrown it away thinking it wasn't worth keeping, and I thought, ooh, I think I can do something with that, and here it is. Said guitar. So as I say, the neck was falling off. Um, some person, for some bizarre reason, decided that it would be um, uh, a designer advantage to stick plastic tape across the front of it so when I got it it had black plastic tape stuck all over it and you can see that unfortunately that's meant that I permanently have this fascinating design on it that I can't really get rid of because if I was to sand it down to to a, a completely white finish I think it would just end up as dust so I've left it something it's quite fascinating really um, however what I did do is think to myself well I've got, I've got guitars and what I haven't got and I've never had the opportunity to get hold of uh, is a banjo guitar, so the only one I'd seen was a Doc Fossey, which was lovely, but $950, and coming from America, and I haven't got that sort of money, I thought, nah, I don't think so. So, I um, set to, and I thought, I'm going to make myself a banjo guitar out of this, so here we are. Um, let's talk about the neck. The neck, um, I basically went, what? <laughs> The neck was off already, so I got a saw, an old one I didn't mind damaging the teeth on, and cut straight through the whole neck, uh, including the frets, because I didn't want to remove the frets, uh, to bring it down to the size I wanted. Um, and the neck is terribly twisted, so that actually was beneficial because it took some of the twist away. I also then cut this part of the neck away because the twist was much worse at this end. And although the neck still is twisted, I've, I've kind of dealt with that, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, having done that, I then shaped the neck into a nice playable round. Um, but obviously, because I'd cut some of the neck away, it meant that where the neck fitted into the body, um, there was going to be a gap. So what I did was I fitted the neck into the body, glued it, and then created a little uh, wooden trim here and a little motif on the front um, to cover up any sort of unsightly patches that were going to be left from having resized that. Uh, it's come out very nicely. The back and the neck were, and the sides were originally a dark mahogany with dreadful old varnishing, so I stripped the whole lot. Um, it actually is um, oak, or there's an oak veneer. These are an oak veneer. The back and sides oak veneer, the neck is oak. The front is obviously a spruce. Um, this is oak, and I've used oak um, elsewhere to, to complement the fact that most of this construction is oak. Um, oiled the whole lot. I've not varnished, I've oiled. Oil, I always find using oil you end up with a better sounding instrument because varnish tends to harden the wood. Oil, oil allows the wood to retain some of its, its softness and suppleness. Um, protects it just as well. Gives it a matte finish rather than a gloss finish, but actually uh, uh, over a while. They used to use oil on the old instruments when they would make things like mandolins in Italy and so on and so forth, so it's not a new thing. So Danish oil, lovely finish. You haven't got to worry about filling in all sorts of bits and pieces on it and so on and so forth. Um, headstock, um, obviously because I'd cut away I needed to reshape the headstock so I took away the peg I didn't need it because obviously I only want five pegs. Uh, reshape this to give it just a little bit of fascination. There's the um, place I had to fill. Uh, put a wooden piece of a piece of oak here um, to strengthen that there. Um, cut these two pegs down. I kept the original machine heads. They're rather good, actually. I rather like them because they're a little bit old-worldy. Cut those down, reshaped them. Um, created a tunnelled fifth. Uh, now, obviously, that would I didn't want to take the, the fretboard off to do that. So in order to create the tunnelled fifth, I simply went through the back of the, the, the neck. You can just see there. Um, and I've run the string up a, 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 a groove, so I've grooved into the neck. doesn't get in the way when I'm playing at all, which is great. Uh, and just a couple of bits of brass lining either end um, to stop the string from cutting into the neck. And then just a little bit of plastic sleeving, which obviously helps. Uh, created a little nut for the fifth. Um, and then I happen to have a banjo bridge, which I've cut to size, uh, which fits very nicely. It's just slightly out of position, but it fits very nicely. 
some bit of a push off. There you go. Put that right later. Um, and uh, and it's worked really nicely, actually. I'll just push that into position, shall we? There we go. Um, didn't want to use the original string fittings that are with standard classical guitar fittings because what that does, obviously, is it pulls up on the, bo the bo body. It's one of the biggest problems with guitars, is, and I've never worked out why they do this. They put all the tension pulling up on the table. Maybe it gives it a better sound, I'm not sure, but ultimately what it does is it distorts the table, and that then means that the table will belly up and you'll end up with a high action. So I've done what I've done with other banjos before. I've put a block on the end, um, which then allows the tension of the strings to pull down fully. You actually get a better sound. Put that down, you get a better sound. Um, that's out of tune now because I've moved that nut. Um, and um, that will actually encourage the table to stay flat. Um, I can gradually, it will probably flatten a little bit more. I can then just adjust the action to compensate for that as that, as that happens. Uh, and it's created a lovely instrument as far as I'm concerned. I really love the sound because... Although it's not a lovely, rich wood sound that you would expect from a glorious guitar, actually banjos don't have lovely, rich wooden sounds. Banjos typically do have a very sort of hard, somewhat you know, pingy sound. And what it's done is it's given me an instrument that's got a real sort of old-world folky feel to it, and I love the sound of it. Um, and just to give you an example, I'm going to play a little tune uh, that I'm hopefully doing this weekend uh, at a concert um, called Ballad of the Eternal Seed, which was written for banjo. Um, and just to, just to let you see what this sounds like, and I, I am thrilled with it because it's cost me absolutely nothing. It hasn't cost me a single penny to put this thing together. It's all been done from what's available. If I just put this up, excuse me a minute, just put this up a little bit further so I can show you the guitar. There we go. Okay, here we go. name, like childhood memories replayed, the bonds that fill us will not change. There you go, sorry about that at the end, my daughter walked in with a rabbit. These things happen. Um, I think it's lovely. I love the sound of it. I love the fact that it's got it's got an old worldy feel that you you know that, that you probably would have expected from an instrument maybe made a century ago, where they hadn't got the technology and, and uh, necessarily uh, to produce the richest sounding instruments. But I love it, um, and it's as I say, it's cost me absolutely nothing. Uh, and I'm thrilled with it. And what a, what a shame that people will throw instruments away rather than consider that you know things could actually be recycled. Um, we live in a throwaway society, and what a shame that we do. So, there you go. My banjo. My banjo guitar. Um, so if you've got an old guitar, and you want to do something with it rather than throw it away, let me know. Perhaps if I've got the time, I can convert it into a cricket bat for you. You never know. Thanks. Bye.